Toshiba's TR200 series of SATA SSDs are fast, reliable, and competitively priced. They are also the first retail SSD featuring Toshiba's 64-layer TLC 3D flash for both lower power and cost savings while maintaining top-end SATA SSD performance. The TR200 is available in capacities from 240 to 960 gigabytes and comes with a three-year warranty, so click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent! What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is part two of my Tesla installation. Uh, it's actually Tesla doing the power wall, uh, which is a big battery that backs up the power for your entire home. And there's also, also gonna be solar installation going on that's being handled by Solar City. Uh, they're both associated companies. So uh, I'm gonna be just sort of taking you guys through the installation experience today. And I wanted to be upfront about what's gonna be included in this video. In the part one video, I did kind of a vlog and they updated my main electrical panel. Part two is gonna be kind of a similar style to that. Part of the reason for that is that there's gonna be a two to six week gap once the install is finished today, where I need to wait for the utility, Southern California Edison, to come inspect it and sign off before the whole thing can actually be turned on. So I'm gonna do a follow-up video later on where I talk about stuff like how much it costs, actual use case scenarios, show you guys the app and that kind of thing. Today's just gonna to be the install, so I don't want anyone to get any uh, random ideas about what actually is gonna be included. That said, it is just after 8 a.m. here in Southern California, and uh, I have a few more things to do still before the crew arrives to do the installation, so I'm gonna to get to that. Okay, here is my backyard once again, and I don't know if you can tell, but look, the lawn's kind of mowed. Um, Everything's pretty much the same as it was uh, last time I showed it to you. I guess my plastic is peeling off just a little bit perhaps, but um, the power wall is gonna be installed today to the right of this stuff, and I think there's a couple more uh, panels that might go on. And of course the solar is going up on the roof up there. The crew from last week that did all this did a really good job, and they also were totally cool with me filming, so I'm gonna get permission from the crew this week to do the same thing once again. Set up the time lapse over there, I gotta get that going on. But I think most importantly right now before anyone arrives is I need to make sure that I've picked up the dog poop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle that. Back inside here and uh, here's my, my stash of equipment for today. I have, fortunately, I thought ahead and I, I charged my Hero 4 up today for the time lapse. I've also got two battery banks here. Those did a fine job keeping this thing charged to be doing the time lapse all day last time. So I'm gonna do that again. Uh, just got backup stuff here for my RX-105 that I'm using to document today's stuff, and oh, uh, this thing. This is just a little mini tripod by Manfrotto, and I really like it. And I'm using the mirror to show you guys. It's not focusing very well, and I'm using auto white balance, which is why everything looks kind of yellow in here. Uh, this, the lighting is really stark right now, but all right, time-lapse camera is set up once again. Uh, I've got it in roughly the same spot that I had it in uh, for last week. Backed it up a little bit. I made it go a little bit higher so I can hopefully get a little bit more of the roof up there, but uh, it's actually already going. I just started it off. Um, crew hasn't arrived yet, but uh, in order to keep this thing powered, for now I'm going to plug it in just AC inside so it can keep charging and maximize the battery life. Once they turn the power off, I can switch to these power banks. Uh, and if that, if I, if I really run out of battery, which I don't think it'll happen based on last week, then I can actually get a UPS inside and plug this into the UPS and still keep it charging. So, documentation has begun. I have good news, Tesla has arrived. We're on schedule. Dogs are locked inside, getting angry of course. Uh, work area is being set up. I'm very happy they brought an easy up uh, today. Actually, timing wise, they were very, very fortunate for today because it is pretty warm today. It's going to be in the mid mid 80s here in California, but it was 95 like a day or two ago and it actually dropped down. So they're just laying stuff out here and then there's a big truck out front that has all the solar panels in it. So I'll check that out. But shade, this is reminding me that I really need a patio cover. That'll maybe I'll do that in a garage work log in the future or something. So all the gear in the truck, getting unloaded. Hey look, new toys. Uh, I've got I've got the Nest and I get a home gateway. So I should, I should do, at least give you guys an unboxing of the Nest, I think. Solar panel. Here's the 
There's the solar panel. Plugs, plugs in the back. There's the spec sheet. 325 watts per panel. Awesome. Inside the puppies are waiting patiently. Not really patiently. They're like, what the heck's going on out there? You guys were okay with this last week, right? So if you guys will uh, forgive the drilling and stuff going on outside and on the roof, I have a quick unboxing to do. I wasn't aware of that. So this is my home gateway from Solar City. Uh, this is part of the uh, the whole solar system and uh, it reads and reports your system's energy pr energy production and ensures everything is running smoothly. Uh, so you actually connect this up to your home router, and that's how the solar grid connects up. So quick start guide involved in there. Here is the actual device itself. Under here, there's basically just an Ethernet jack in there, and that's. Pretty much all there is to it, I suppose. Oh look, there's a USB port on the outside, so maybe you can access that for some diagnostics or something. Beyond that, there's just an AC power adapter, so yay, I get to plug in one more AC power thing, and then a nice pretty low profile ethernet cable to connect it up. And this, I am told, me needs to be connected directly to my home router. Next up is my Nest, and this actually comes, you get this free, free, all you have to do is spend 30-ish grand on a, the solar and everything <laughs> installation, uh, but all right. This is actually going to be my very first smart home thing, uh, but basically it's a smart thermostat. Nest has been out for a while, so you guys may or may not be familiar with it, but um, let's get this out of the box. So convenient things like automatic programming of your thermostat. Uh, don't cool or heat an empty house uh, if, you, if you leave, you know, it'll turn off, that kind of thing. Control the thermostat from remotely on a phone or a tablet or a laptop. And of course, hopefully no one on the internet can hack into it and take control of my house and determine how hot or cold I might be. That's always the fear, of course, with these smart home internet connected devices. But, you know, it's the future, so we've just got just to trust, gotta trust Google there. All right, so here is the Nest itself. And uh, it's got a, it's got, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know why that's covering right there, but I'm gonna leave it on for now. Uh, looks like pretty simple connection points in the back for the wall-mounted portion of it. Uh, we got a booklet here with some brightly colored documentation about installation and how it works and all that good stuff. Here we have the uh, business end of the unit, which is, has some buttons. I have no idea what these buttons do. Fascinating though. Oh, look, it's got a level, so you can level it useful too. And of course the connection points here for uh, for this side of it, which looks to be uh, micro USB and then this proprietary plug which actually gives the connection to the base unit. Wall mounting hardware, uh, this is a metal bracket for the back and then a plastic bracket uh, which is, has more of a wall plug type feel so gives it a gives it a finished look when it's installed and then uh, other than that just, just a set of screws in here. So a set of screws and that appears to be pretty much it. Oh they did they did include a screwdriver, a, ne a bulbous nest screwdriver. Oh, with a flippy Phillips head and a not Phillips head thing, so that's handy. It has been unboxed. You found it? It's over here. Really? Look at this hand cart. I'm told it's called the Escalera, the stair cat. It's a stair climbing hand cart, which I guess is specifically made for this type of installation. That's it's actually really cool. Look, it's motorized on the back. It has gears and a, and a hand crank because you know, it's have to have the ability to go manual. But uh, here's my first look at the power wall. There's the mounting points on the back. It's got a big bracket uh, and they're working on mounting it right over here. It's going to be down up against the ground uh, and then they're going to need to run an inverter for the solar grid and that's going to be mounted to the wall right over here. Uh, there's a there were, I guess standards are sort of being developed and updated over time for this type of thing, depending on the city and, and that kind of thing. So you're not supposed to mount anything above the battery, and that's why the inverter is going to go over here. So when they're up on the roof, they actually uh, drill into the roof and they tie in. So they're using climbing equipment. This is all for safety. Uh, they actually did that even when they were doing the pre-inspection pre, pre -inspection check stuff. 
um, which I approve of. And then when they're done, they remove the, the tie downs they do and they patch it over with tar or whatever to make it make it uh, waterproof, which is good. This is the hard part. I need to run a charge on my credit card, which is a little bit more than I typically uh, charge on it, and I wanted to call ahead to make sure there wouldn't be any problems running the transaction. And how much is the possible free range going to be for that? It is fifteen thousand nine hundred and sixty-two dollars and eighty-eight cents. You need solar panels? Yep, it's actually being installed right now. Anything else I can help with? That'll do it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you very much. Oh. I forgot to stay on the line to do the, the survey. I'm sorry. Chase, uh, Chase, you were very nice just now. That's the easy part, calling to make sure that the charge is going to go through. Now I actually have to run the charge. So I'm going to be talking about how much this whole thing costs, and if you, if you caught that, about $16,000 is what I'm going to be spending right now. Uh, when you get a Tesla Powerwall solar installation, uh, you pay a $500 deposit, and then you pay half when they begin installation, and half when they end installation. So. Double that amount, yes, about $32,000 is what this whole thing is costing. However, there's a $10,000 tax credit, at least available right now. I believe it's nationwide in the US. I think it's a federal tax credit. So I am gonna be getting a substantial amount of this back, but it's a tax credit, so I still have to pay up front. I would almost say that's the most money I've spent all at one time, but I just recently paid taxes this year. It's right, it's for a good cause. There's like, there's people on the roof. What's going on? All right, look. Okay. Got some chalk lines down. You can see the general. That's that's where the solar power is going to go. No. Worries. Jerry's going to give us a quick rundown of how this is all set up here. So, uh, how's this work? So we, we're de-energized, safe. This is your main breaker. This turns on your entire house panel system. Okay. Uh, this is your uh, AC, which is not being backed up by the Tesla system. This is your main 100 amp breaker. It powers up your gateway, which is your your smart brain system. Okay. This controls everything. This is your transfer switch. Uh, this registers if there's a utility power loss. This is where you're capable of transferring your power back and forth to utility to, to between your solar and your uh, your battery. Okay. So this is this is where we'll we'll uh, um, we'll control everything right here. Uh, it, your 100 amp breaker feeds this, which powers up your panel. So whenever you turn this breaker on or off, you're gonna lose power to your gateway, your Tesla system. Okay. And you're gonna lose power to all your branch circuits that feed your house. Okay. Testing the power wall. All right, so right now we're off grid. We're being uh, powered by the battery only. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn the main uh, back on, re restore utility power. It'll take a few seconds to, oh, matter of fact, it, the Tesla power wall we restore power, mm -hmm. we'll take five minutes before it uh, switches you back over to utility oh, okay. to protect itself. Okay. So you'll have exactly five minutes from now. And it is time to set up the nest. Uh, you just uh, oh. scroll left and right. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. And then you, and then you just push. Ooh, we got English. Uh, you need your uh, internet password and internet provider. This is the Nest keyboard. My first customer said that is setting up by himself. Oh really? Yeah. Usually, usually yeah. you have to do this with people? Yeah. So this is the fun part. Alright, we have a single family home. Tell how many dogs we have. The thermostat is in the family room. This is a uh, wiring how the uh, your oh, AC wiring cool. is detected, so those are the wires that we put. That's where they are existing one on the previous one. Now I know what's what. Heat, cool, fan, and power. Yeah. Gas. This is your heater is gas? Uh, yes. Gas. Gas heater. Forced air. Forced air. Uh, temperature. Right. Choose your eco temperature. Heat to... I'm not going to tell people what my wife usually has this set to. Yeah. This green leaf. That means it's whatever this is, eco mode. Okay. Means like a state recommendation. I see. We'll spend less energy because it's not gonna cool till you want it and all. That like it's a temperature that everybody can live in, kind of. Need like one degree. It's like a California, yeah. We usually actually have it at eighty-one. Which, yeah, so you know, it's which like I've learned to to deal with myself. So the system is functional at this point. Powerball's there. 
So is the power wall going to work? Uh, or not until everything's signed off for by the... Power wall, you cannot turn it on until you get permission to operate. From, okay. From Edison. All right, so for now it's... Sure does look pretty. It's going to look pretty for now. That's <laughs> okay. probably it. All right, guys, we have now reached uh, roughly the end of this video. And I'm going to explain some things because we didn't get quite as far along today as was originally expected. Uh, the main reason for that is that my roof, uh, they've determined, is not quite in top shape. Uh, it's not like my roof's falling apart, but it's looking like it's probably going to be due for replacement based on their assessment within the next probably, I don't know, two to three, four years. And if you install a solar grid on top of that, uh, it makes it much more of a pain in the butt to go in and fix any roofing problems you might have. First off, the roof situation is something that Tesla said is usually assessed and uh, they would tell me up front. So that was something that they said uh, should have been notified earlier about, but as a result, they're actually going to fix my roof for me. They are gonna redo the roof where the solar uh, array would be like free of charge, which I think is pretty cool. Um, honestly, I don't mind waiting a little bit longer for something like that. And I definitely agree that fix the roof first before putting the solar panels on top. That's definitely the way to go. So if you're considering something like a Tesla Powerwall solar installation or something like that, definitely they're going to check your roof. Uh, maybe check your roof yourself. Bear in mind it's something that you'll probably want to have up to date before you put solar on top of it. But all that said, they're going to be getting back to me uh, later today about options for the roof and uh, we're probably going to have the whole roof redone and they're going to cover the part of it that uh, the solar array would be on. So uh, I guess I'm probably going to do a follow-up video on the roof going in. But they did install a decent amount of hardware today, as you maybe saw. Uh, so we actually have the inverter here uh, for the solar panel. So this is where the sunlight will go uh, through here and that's got its own deal and I can functionally turn that on or off. Look, I've got a power wall. Yay! So the ultimate upshot for today is that my electrical system has been expanded. Uh, I still have power and everything, so I'm good to go for now. No solar panels yet. and They gave me the option to leave the solar panels here or take them with them. I decided to have them take them with them just because they were already out by the truck. So they'll bring them back when they do that installation. One last thing I did want to bring up though, before I go here, is that if any of you are considering getting a power wall like this one, uh, use me as a referral. I only just discovered this today, but if I can refer five people to get a power wall from Paul's Hardware, uh, then I get, I get a power wall. I get a red special edition power wall. And, and I can add it to this one and then I can have more battery which is kind of exciting. So uh, if any of you guys go sign up for Tesla, I'll see if I can get more information or if I can do a direct link or something like that. But I think you just put Paul's hardware for the referral. Uh, hey, if, if you guys do that, uh, I'll be very happy with you. And, and maybe I'll get a red power wall in the future. It is bright out here this morning. Hey guys, this is a, a second outro. You get a double outro for this video. So I wanted to update because uh, the power wall has actually been installed for a couple weeks now. And as I mentioned in the first video, they determined that uh, the roof needs an upgrade. That has been scheduled now, but it had to be scheduled for the first week of May. So it's gonna be a few more weeks until I can bring you guys a final installation video. And then of course after that, a testing video where I go over how much it costs and whether it was worth it and all that kind of stuff. So. I wanted to give some kind of closure for this video, and for that purpose I have... Wow, it's bright. Can you guys see? Okay. Ta-da! New umbrella. So happy. Such an upgrade. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.